So the herringbone stitch itself is a fun stitch. It's my favorite as far as rope stitches go in that tubular fashion. If you're not exactly sure how to do herringbone stitch, you may want to watch the herringbone stitch video before you go into actually doing this tubular herringbone stitch. I also have a simple video on tubular herringbone stitch showing using different colors how to do each actual stitch of the herringbone rope. So the herringbone rope is consisting of two rows of herringbone, and I'm gonna show you how to do this diagonal pattern with two different colors of Swarovski crystals and eight O seed beads. You could do this in all different colors. You can change up the pattern. You can skip doing one of the colors of crystals and have it more look spiral. That's kind of up to you. Herringbone will have a little bit of a give to it, so it makes a great bangle. However, I'll be using a clasp. If you would like to join along and make this fun uh, diagonal herringbone here, that spiral herringbone, you can look below the video. There's a date stamp that says when the video was published. Check out below that date stamp, the little show more button or the down arrow, click on that and it'll give you links to the different products that are used. For my 8O seed bead, excuse me, I'm gonna be using the Miyuki seed bead in the Crystal Lab full color. So this is a Bead that is manufactured in Japan. It is Miyuki brand and then it is shipped to the Czech Republic and it is coated in that crystal lab color which is great because it matches with a lot of the Czech glass beads. In my case also it's the brightest silver color and it works the best with sterling silver or in this case with the rhodium plated it kind of works exactly more so I think than the Duracoat silver or the galvanized silver. In addition to the 8 OC beads, you are gonna need some crystals or some other three millimeter beads. You can use fire polished rounds, you can use pearls. I'm gonna be using the Swarovski crystals. The Swarovski crystal colors that I have are the crystal heliotrope in the three millimeter, and then I also have the alexandrite in the three millimeter. So the alexandrite is one of those under the film here. It looks blue. When you take it out of the film, it gives a little bit more of a purple color. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, it's one of those tricky colors. When you're using this bracelet, we're gonna be using every other bead as a crystal. So you're gonna end up with your rose having two crystals and one 8 on each. Also, you are going to have a clasp if you would like so. So the clasp I'm using, I've wanted to use this clasp for a while. It's a super strong magnetic clasp from Clasp Garden and it is two hands holding one another, so I think it's really cool. So I'm gonna use that on my actual bracelet um, as an actual statement clasp. So a lot of times the clasps are just something to put on and off. This one here, I'm using this hand clasping as an actual statement clasp. That way um, it is something you can see it's strong and the clasps hands just wanna go back together. The whole thing is gonna be strung on 0 .006 wildfire beading thread in the gray color. And I'm using a size 10 needle to do the rope. In addition to that, I have a needle nose pliers handy, and that's gonna be useful for flattening out the end of the thread, which is gonna make it easier to thread the needle, especially if you're cutting the thread off the spool or burning down with your thread zap or thread burner, which I recommend. I also have a nice workable surface here. Um, you can use a bead on it board, a bead mat, anything like that. You may also want some super new glue handy if you are someone that likes to glue your knots closed. So again, I'm using the Swarovski crystals. I went back and forth with some check glass also, but decided to go with color so that way you can see it a little bit better as we create and design the rope. Again, if you do wanna see a step-by-step, -step, more in detail version of this, you can search on our YouTube page. So when you're on youtube.com uh, slash Potomac Beads, Beadco, you can look there in a magnifying glass underneath the video and the header page. Search our site for the herringbone stitch and it'll give you how to do that herringbone rope or tubular herringbone. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this sparkly diagonal herringbone and show you guys how we're going to get started and starting with the actual pattern of the crystals. So before we get started, I wanna show you if you know herringbone. This is a good little skip for you. You don't have to actually watch the whole video for this, but if you copy down this little chart here, it'll help you to determine exactly which beads are going on in which order if you want to do a pattern similar to the one that I'm doing. So this quadrant here is going to show the herringbone as a grouping of four. It's going to be two groups of two beads and they're going to sit next to one another. The herringbone itself is always going to be that pattern of four. 
the bead that's in position one will move to position two and then to three and then to four. What that's going to do is create that spiral around effect. So you're going to see that silver bee there going the whole way around and stepping up and spiraling. The bee that is in position three is going to go to four, to one, to two. So it's circling around the actual design. It's going to go from the quadrant that it's next to over to the next one. As we design and we go over this, I'll bring this picture back in, but I wanted to show you this before I got started so you can see exactly what the beads are and which position they're moving into. You can see also the non-circled areas and the non-circled numbers. That's always going to be one of our 8OC beads. So you're never going to have two crystals that are right next to one another. They're always going to be a, a diagonal from one another. Also, the crystals, you're always going to have one of each color every stitch. So this little diagram here is four different stitches. This would be the first go round or the first little uh, herringbone tubular section. This would be the second, third, and fourth as we work around. To get started, I want you to get on five feet of beading thread onto your size 10 needle and we will get started with our herringbone stitch and then go into adding our colors. To get started, the first thing that I'm going to do is actually put a stop bead on the piece. I'm going to leave myself a tail so I can come back and put the clasp on, but you want to leave about 10 inches or so at the base of your thread. Put on the stop bead, which is gonna be a bead that is not included in the project and will eventually come off, and go through that stop bead two times to have it stay in place. To get started on our stitch, Again, we are going to be doing two groupings of herringbone. Because we know that herringbone is always added in groups of two, we're going to do four beads on first. I'm going to let that drop down next to my bead, and I'm going to sew back through the first two beads and out. And I know on my previous videos, I've gotten comments before about the herringbone start. There's a number of different ways that you can start with herringbone. This is what I think is the easiest, and I find it's the easiest to teach people. So if you know another way to start your tubular herringbone, that's great. Some people will start with two beads and ladder stitch. This is, I think, the easiest way to teach new people. So once you have on your four beads, we're going to establish that this is going to be one side of our herringbone, and next to the stop bead is going to be the other side of our herringbone. Herringbone stitch always adds two beads at one time. So my thread is coming out of my third bead that I put on, and I'm going, or my second bead rather, and I'm going to put on my two beads and I'm going to sew down through the bead on the other side. Once I do this, I'm going to sew up through the next bead in the original collection of beads here. So that would be bead four. And I'm going to add two more beads and sew down that first bead next to the stop bead. That's going to get eight beads total onto the herringbone stitch here. This itself is actually the first two rows of herringbone stitch. What we're going to do is kind of fold those up together towards one another. So those two beads fold up. The thread and needle are going to go up through bead number two from the original row and the first bead that you put on in your second row, that second grouping of four. And there I have my herringbone started. From here, I'm gonna go through again, adding two beads, sewing down through the second bead that I added in row number two, going up through then the third bead that I added in row two. So I came down the second bead, going up the third bead. From here, I'm going to get two more beads on, go down through bead number four from the second row, and then up through bead number one. At the same time that I go up through bead number one from the previous row, I'm also going to go up through bead one from the newest row that I just did. So you're always after you add four beads on, going up through two beads at a time. You'll see an arching thread there, or the connector thread, sits two back at the beginning, and then as you add, you'll go through and add those beads in. 
So I'll do one more of my herringbone stitch and then we'll start to establish our pattern. Again, two beads go on as I start. I'm gonna go down through bead number two, up through bead number three, add two more beads on, down through bead number four, you kind of want those to sit like they're open in that V section. And then I'm going to go up through bead number one from the previous row, as well as bead number one from this row that I just put on. And that completes my next herringbone section. So you can see this nice rope that you're getting, that rope effect. And the further you go, it'll get more and more into that rope effect. Now that we have the actual baseline established, what I wanna do is show you how we're going to go in and add our crystals. Again, if you have not copied this down, press pause and copy this down right now. The first thing we are going to do is establish those quadrants. So here, the bead that I'm going to be putting on is bead number one. That first bead there that I put on is going to be my heliotrope crystal. From the heliotrope crystal, I'm gonna put on a silver bead because you're never putting two beads of the same next to one another. I'm gonna go down bead number two from the previous row. Making that sit nicely. Up bead number three from the previous row in our herringbone stitch. And now as I come out and I just did beads one and two, I'm gonna add bead three and four. Three is going to be my crystal bead here. And number four, grab a couple more of my eight O's here. Four is gonna be my eight O bead. So again, three and four is what we're adding right now. Go down through bead number four in the previous row. And then we're gonna go up through bead number or down through bead number three, we're gonna go up through bead number four from the previous row, as well as our first crystal, because that's bead one from the row we just, connect, or just completed. From here, you can see these sitting in that order. You have bead one, two, three, and four. As we continue to add, you're gonna look at your diagram. Always again, whenever you're coming out of a crystal, you're going to put a silver bead on top of the crystal. So the first bead you pick up is going to be your 8 seed bead. As you're going into the next bead, you're gonna notice which bead is in order as you start to create that spinning effect. So bead number two is gonna be that heliotrope bead. So I'm on my silver and my heliotrope. Go down through, continuing that herringbone stitch. I'm gonna go up through bead number three from the previous row. And now I know that bead number three is a silver. And again, I know that because I'm also on top of a crystal. So I know that since I'm on top of a crystal, the first bead that I'm going to add is a silver bead. So a silver bead goes on. And then if I look at the diagram, my fourth bead is another one of my crystal beads in that same blue color. So there you have completed your second quadrant. Going up then through the last bead as well as the first one you added on in quadrant two, we're gonna start quadrant number three. So number three, position number one, we're coming out of a silver bead, is gonna be our blue bead. As I come out of that position number one, you can see, here I'll dump out a couple more beads that my next bead, again, I'm always only grabbing one crystal and one silver bead. So as soon as you know where you are and what bead you need to grab first, it's easy to know what your next bead is. So I have my blue crystal on and my silver. As I progress with my tubular herringbone and I come out the other side, I know I'm coming out a silver bead and I know that the blue one already went in. So this one's really easy because I know I'm gonna put a heliotrope on and I'm gonna put a silver on. So once you establish the first crystal that you pick up in each quadrant, it's really easy to realize what the next one is going to be. Sewing up then through two bead ones, coming out to do my fourth quadrant. 
My fourth quadrant, bead number one, is a silver bead. Bead number two is going to be another blue bead. Going down. And now I know because my bead number, I'm going around with that bead number one, as I sew up through the next bead, I'm coming out of a crystal, so I know I have to pick up a silver, and I already put on a blue, so I know it's going to be a heliotrope. And down. Make sure those are sitting correctly, and then sew up two beads. So that just finished one whole quadrant around of those four little diagrams. Back to bead number one now. I'm coming out of the silver bead and on is going to go that heliotrope color. As I continue to add and get more of my beads on, I'm continuing again with those starting positions and getting in that order and that's going to start to create that nice turn effect. As you turn, you get that nice spiraling going on. So continue adding, going through and adding in your quadrants and adding the beads along to get your herringbone rope. Once you have your rope long enough, um, you are going to do a couple rows. I'm going to do a couple of rows just with my silver color, and I'm just doing that to repeat the beginning. So I'm just going to do basically three rows with just the silver color. And to give you an idea, I used 96 crystals in mine. That being said, or um, I made mine not super long because I really want to use this clasp and that clasp is about an inch long. So just for your record, um, if you are thinking about how many crystals you will need, I would say bet on about 120 crystals because that's how many rows you're going to have. So if you have 120, you've got enough to do 60 rows of your herringbone stitch. So. As I finish then with my last row here, I'm gonna get ready and actually attach my clasp. So if you want to grab a wire guard, you can grab a wire guard and use that to connect to the clasp. I'm going to um, come out of the clasp and what I wanna do is actually combine and get this together prior to putting on the clasp. To do so, rather than adding a bead, for the herringbone stitch, I'm going to scoot from one side rather than actually adding a bead. I'm just going right over, not adding a bead, and going over to connect to the other side. Again, not adding any beads, going over and connecting to the other side. So what that's doing is creating those bridge threads between the sides, you can see there, without adding any extra beads. Now that that's closed off, I'm going to have a bead that's going to be central for my clasp to actually hook onto. So coming out of the herringbone stitch there, I'm going to grab one bead and go into the next 8 -o. Go over like I would be doing the herringbone again. And instead of adding another bead, add that other thread through the 8 the same 8 and down the other side. As I come back up then, I'm going to come back up the herringbone stitch just like I would be adding another bead, but instead I'm coming out of that eight. I'm going to link on to my clasp. I'm going to sew into the other side of that eight. I'm going to do that several times so it sits right along and I've got a lot of stitches. I'm going to do it at least probably four times because it is a heavy clasp. So you can see, I'm gonna to start to pull now, getting rid of all that extra thread. Again, if you would wanna use a wire guard, you can use a wire guard or a wire protector in there. And I'm gonna continue on them, going through and doing about, like I said, about five times total through the actual clasp portion. Now that I have that through those multiple times, I'm gonna go back through the bracelet down the herringbone stitch and tie off along the bridge threads there, going underneath the bridge thread, making a loop with my thread, and then going, taking the needle through that loop and making a little sewer's half stitch knot. From there, I'm gonna go further down into my herringbone. 
and repeat that same thing three times. On the other side then, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, taking off the stop bead and then attaching it to the other side of my arms here. And once I have the thread on and significantly knotted where I want it to, you can get your thread zap or your thread burner, burn off the extra thread, and then burn that thread down towards the project. Again, from here then, going on to the other side, I'm gonna go back over to the other side of my herringbone rope, do the same thing, closing it off, and then adding that extra 8 OC bead and attaching to my other set of my arms. Once you're finished with the design, then you have that fun diagonal effect going on with the crystals, and I love my hands there. You can see how big that clasp is on my small wrist, but I really wanted to use it, and I think this rope design is a nice way to use that clasp. Again, if you need any of the materials to do, once you're finished knotting and burning off the thread ends, your diagonal herringbone uh, tubular bracelet is finished. You can see that hand on my wrist. I have a small wrist, but it's a rather big clasp. That's why I wanted to do something simple as the actual bracelet portion and something that I would wear a lot with those nice blues and that heliotrope color, that um, alexandrite. You could also use, if you wanted to get that same effect as the one under light, you could use a light sapphire color. Again, it really doesn't matter what design you are going to do, what color pattern you are going to do. You can even do four different things, but just go back to this little chart and that'll help you get those numbers. Again, if you need any of the supplies to do this, you can go back to the beginning of the video to the little date and timestamp below the video and hit that show more button and it'll give links to all of these different materials that are used in the design as well. As always, you can shop with me at potomacbeads.com and gather your supplies. You can also visit us on Facebook and Instagram and check out our Pinterest. You can also join our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. There is a wonderful collection of people that love to make jewelry, love to inspire others to make jewelry and give ideas as well. So have fun creating everyone and hopefully you guys get a chance to make one of these spiraled tubular herringbone bracelets.